Hello and welcome to our September edition of the Northview Reads podcast. Um, I'm Crystal Caves, pastor of discipleship here at Northview, and we're going to talk about the scriptures. I'm joined today by Dolly. Do you hey. want to say hi? Introduce yourself. Dolly Oliech, missions pastor here at Northview. Great to be here. Yep. Mm-hmm. And from uh, with Freddie. So Freddie's here too. Hi. Good to be back. And who are you, Freddie? I'm the pastor of young adults. There you go. Great. <laughs> uh, we wanted to talk a little bit about summer Bible study, what we did over the summer, um, how we kind of saw our Bible reading and ministry intersperse. Um, so start us off, Freddie. Uh, this summer, let's see, I was part of, well, I was involved in two inductive studies, but far more directly with the second mm-hmm. one. So the first one was in First John. I like, I think I read First John through one time as part of it, and then just in talking with uh, uh, Josh Ratzlaff, one of the interns, one of the immersed guys who ran it. Uh, and then the, the Genesis one, The Life of Joseph, super fun. Like I did a little bit different than we've done in the past rather than kind of the, the buckets, like if you've ever been to one of these, kind of the, I'd use theme buckets to kind of organize a passage. And then the classic who, what, when, where, how. Um, this time I did plot arcs, so it was ah, a, a little bit harder to draw, yeah. um, but super fun. And people responded really well. I have no really idea well. what you're talking about, but that's okay. No, well, you should have signed up for another the co- conversation. Next summer. Next mm-hmm. summer. You don't um, know what plot arcs are? They're, well, they're oh, like it's the narrative. Plot arcs. You, yeah. it, it sounded like one word plot when you arc. said it, so I didn't know what you. Plot meant. arcs. Yeah, like they're like <laughs> like, uh, like the guy in the there's British a guy in the word. Bob, are you Plutarch. using? Yeah. Oh, he's a Greek guy, I think. Plot arcs. Okay, plot that yes, arcs. that I understand. Yes. got it. So it was just it was fun. I felt a little bit like an English teacher, you know, like what's the conflict and resolution, mm-hmm. blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but people responded really well. I think we had like twenty five ish people every every week that's so great was it a great. mix of ages and stuff or was yeah it pretty good mix or? there's like there's the one young adult table yeah and it, like it doesn't matter how many people are in the room they're like we're all sitting together so like one week was six young adults the next week was 14 same round table oh, yeah designed for eight that's so right. <laughs> awesome they want to just stick um, with their posse that's right that's right but great mix and super fun like it you're reading genesis and i mean like we started the year with it and now in august reading it again um, and it's still drawing connections. You know, I, I preached at Revelation a few weeks ago and d- brought in the Jacob's story, which I only remembered because I'd just been reading Joseph's story like right. as a kid. So just fun, fun way to keep keep busy. Yeah, and for word. those of you who don't know, we do offer like summer book clubs and summer studies because we want people to be able to have an opportunity to be in the word over the summer, but in a less um, structured way maybe than in our fall and winter semesters. We want it to be available, especially if there's new people at Northview and they show up in June. We don't want to say, you can get involved in September. (laughs) We want to give them ways that they can have Mm on-ramps into community and on-ramps into studying the Bible over the summer. But they're not as um, much uh, homework focused. Like they're more like, just come, be participating, and, and be in the Word and, and grow in community together. So if you didn't get involved in any of those this year, feel free to do that next year. We tr- try to do it every year. So Dolly, what was your summer like? Well, I didn't join a book club or an, a specific <gasps> Bible study, I know, oh, but no. I did take a team to South Asia. Oh, so, wow. Yes, that counts. Um, and we did go through the book of James there at you the same time. You memorized it? Incredible. No, 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 okay. no, but we did work through it when we had time, when we were not exhausted, when I didn't have questions at 8 o'clock saying, how long do we have to meet because I want to sleep, and they literally would fall asleep because they were so exhausted. Wow. But it was good. So it was a very wonderful experience. Um but yes, continued on throughout the Bible reading plan, even on my journeys. So it was good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You were saying earlier you weren't allowed to bring Bibles to India. So yeah. you had to do it on your phone. Right. Yeah. So what, was that, the, what was the climate there? Like in terms of focus on re- like relationship with Christians, how did you feel as you were in India? Well, where we were specifically, we were um, surrounded with believers right. um, in the campus that we were at. So yeah. that is always such a blessing to me because when you get to worship the Lord with others from around the world, to me, I just get emotional because I feel like this is such a sweet taste of what it will be one day in yeah. the future. And it's always so inspiring to see others at, um, and the faith that they have and the excitement they have for Christ. So that was really cool. But it is dif- definitely different different traveling around And you're observing how people respect their culture Mm -hmm. and their religion. And so because of that, we can't. Mm -hmm. And so out of respect for them and being visitors, we Mm. had to just lay low on those things. And so that was eye-opening as well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, your words of um, just being encouraged by being with other believers was kind of my reflections today when we read through Second Corinthians chapter 1, because Paul talks about that it's God who makes them stand firm, yeah. and it's God who makes him stand firm, and yeah. it just was a reminder to me that, yeah, God's doing all this work behind the scenes in people's lives. We don't know it, and yet he's causing people mm-hmm. to stand firm. Right. Even if we're not related to them or like mm. in, in ministry with them, God's doing a work. And yeah. I was encouraged with that. We just came back from Saskatoon, visited some friends in Calgary on both ways. And just too, like they're in, our friends in Calgary are in healthy Bible-believing churches and God's doing a work and he's holding them firm there. And that's awesome. it's just so great to hear yeah. that, right? Mm-hmm. You don't always hear those stories, yep. but God's at work all yep. over the world doing mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah, I didn't do a lot of other Bible study this summer other than the Bible reading plan um, because we were spending lots of time in the book of Joshua writing curriculum for our fall study. So that is going to start September 9th, I think, is the Monday night. So Monday night, Wednesday morning for women, Wednesday night for guys. Um, We're really excited to jump into that. It's a book that is, as we read it in the Bible reading plan, there's lots of stuff going in it, Mm -hmm. on in it, that we kind of in our modern day sensibilities um, don't know what to do with in terms of warfare and all that kind of stuff. What does yeah. this mean for us as Christians? So I think digging into it, it's going to be really I helpful. can't wait. I'm looking yeah. forward to it. I, I'm looking forward to unpacking it with other people. It'll be great. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that'll start in September. So we're looking forward to that. So we're going to talk more specifically now just about the Bible reading plan. Uh, looking back on what we have read, looking forward to what we will be reading again, just to kind of give you guys some help and context and also just share our own reflections on it. Um, we read through First Chronicles and the first bit of Second Chronicles. We read a bunch of Psalms um, by non Davidic authors, so Asaph and others, and then also Second Thessalonians, First Corinthians, and now we're starting Second Corinthians. So Dolly, what do you want to? What kind of are some of your highlights of the past? Well, I one thing for sure is that even though Chronicles seems a little bit repetitive, and at the beginning we're just reading a bunch of names, I do appreciate some emphasis on things that we don't see. So yeah. as as much as you see like um, an arc, I guess, of Little David arc. going okay. up, yeah. okay. right? You just see <laughs> things building up in David's life and you only see the good things of David in this in this book yeah. in comparison to Samuel and Kings. But mm-hmm. um, the buildup of his desire for a temple mm-hmm. and yet God says no. But then you get to see the side of him preparing for it, even yeah. though he doesn't actually get to build it and yeah. all of the details that go into that. So I actually really enjoyed reading that. And what really, I just love the chapter on the musicians. Mm. I don't know why I never thought that there wouldn't be more music in the temple. We but like, think of animal sacrifices and yeah. stuff. You don't really think and of just like some ritual, harps and music. Right? Yeah. But then so much music. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Because I like, like music. symbols and so, like loud right. music. And so and many like, musicians yeah. and so many like order and like this guy will do it then, then these guys that like just so much order to it. Yeah. So I thought that was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Second what? Chronicles really focuses on kind of the temple and the priests and mm-hmm. the roles of the priests there, yeah. which you don't see the other ones like first and second Kings, like you said, is more on the Kings. Yeah. But this one focuses much more on the worship. Yes. Yeah. Side of things. Yeah. No, and the, I, I appreciate what you said, Dolly. Like the, it, reads so much smoother so Mm -hmm. even comparing like solomon's rise in the way it's written first or second chronicles you're like oh this was always a plan like god chose my son solomon Mm -hmm. like solomon wasn't the oldest no No. right and then david's own followers split on who they allied with right so that if you read first kings you're like wait a minute it it takes i think like five or six chapters for solomon to be fully installed and his mom um, has to advocate for him yeah, and the priests it, have to advocate totally. for him and David's on his deathbed. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, so obviously I think it's helpful as you kind of see it. You're like, okay, well, it, the Chronicles is obviously trying to give you the big picture. Like we, so God's doing something through thousands of years of history. So mm-hmm. it's less concerned with details and yeah. more following the main characters. Um, so it, it's fun to compare them, um, I think, just to see, oh, this David guy must be important and yeah. this Solomon guy must be important. And it was a good kind of check your heart moment for me as I'm reading because I'm like, OK, you know, I we're so disillusioned with human heroes that I'm like, David's a bum. Solomon's a bum. Right. Yeah. I'm like he, he wasn't like he, he was he did dumb things. But I'm like, if someone wrote a story about my life, they would they would say the same thing. <laughs> yeah. I did dumb things, too. Um, so just a great reminder. There's no human heroes, right? And as the story is written, it's, it's highlighting people that are all part of the big story. So it's fun to compare. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's emphasizing God's faithfulness to his promises, right? Yeah. Through these guys, 100%. even though they weren't perfect. Yeah. 
it was interesting too to see like there were times where it was word for word the same as first kings or for, like there is like even the temple dedication like his prayer is pretty much word for word although yeah. he's like a different ending than the first kings ending and so it's interesting to see even where people the scribes would have copied pretty much exactly maybe what had been done in kings and then added a little bit of stuff here and there and other yeah. times it's quite different so and yeah. I, I, I don't know if you talked about it last month as you're anticipating the reading of it, but I was just looking into it a bit again, preparing for this and, rem- and why, why, is, why are we repeating this? Yeah. And so looking back after the exile and the writers wanting to focus on the worship, on look, we don't want to go back where you were. This is the purpose. This is the good stuff that has come out of it and the way forward. So I thought that was a good reminder as well, yeah. focusing on the good of the building of his earthly kingdom pointing ahead to what is to come so yeah Yeah, and like the like the gospel writers would have known what the other writers wrote and so probably like john being the last didn't necessarily feel like he needed to include everything that was in matthew mark and luke it's the same with the chronicles right there there's a bunch of stuff in kings that they didn't feel they needed to include because they just wanted to focus on certain things Yeah. yeah yeah so it's helpful for us to realize that um, how about the the Psalms were interesting too because they're wrestling with a lot of things like the Psalms of Asaph was wrestling with like I've kept my hands clean God <laughs> like why are they prospering why are those wicked people prospering like, there's some laments of like God I've been faithful and you're not coming through like there's it was definitely these Psalms of people's kind of heart-rending experiences and that's what's yeah. the beauty of the Psalms it's not just David crying out but it's people's experience an honest experience of what they're going through on earth and how they're looking out to the Lord and sometimes feel him, sometimes see him, sometimes yeah. are wondering, are yeah. you going to come through yeah. for me, yeah. Lord? Yeah. Which is what we experience as people. And some of them also, again, just reminding line by line who God is, despite yeah. all of that, all of his character, all of his qualities, and just the reminder again, even as I read, oh yeah, God, you are good, you are faithful, you're steadfast, look what you've done. Yeah. So not all of those psalmists would conclude that way, but you read the next one and you see that. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. How about 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians? Anything you guys want to say about those books so far? <sighs> or the books in general? 1 Corinthians is loaded, but maybe Freddie can talk about oh, it. Oh, man. <laughs> no, you know, the, I, I just had a couple of events this summer with the young adults on like dating and mm-hmm. relationships. Mm-hmm. Um, and I... I, I used a, a line from Proverbs on one, and then um, we used a chunk of Ephesians 5 and something from First Samuel 16. So we weren't in First Corinthians at all. But then I'm, as I'm reading, I'm like, man, this would have been a pretty good text, actually, right? Because <laughs> yeah. uh, like, even just First Corinthians 7, I, like, it's so much on relationship. So it's, I think it's like almost 50 verses. Mm-hmm. And y- you look at it, and you know, dating in one sense seems so simple, right? You're like you're finding another Christian, like how hard can that be? Mm-hmm. Right. But then you're like, Oh my goodness, it's actually crazy hard. Like just cause someone says they're a Christian doesn't mean they are. Mm-hmm. And then once you lock into marriage, I'm like, you're, you're actually, you're like, you're locked in. Yeah. Right. And first Corinthians seven makes it clear. Like you're either married or single, like divorce is something that happens, but, um, that's not the design of it. So, um, seeing like, I think uh, appreciating, Paul writing to, again, to normal people, like mm-hmm. people like us that, I, I mean, they didn't date in the Greco-Roman world, but they had romantic love and there's lots of stuff in there that applies to us, right? So even the concept like marry a Christian, mm-hmm. right? Uh, what do you do if you married someone that didn't turn out the way you expected? Well, I'm like, well, mm-hmm. you stay and mm-hmm. you try to be a faithful Christian and that sanctifies your family, mm-hmm. right? It, there's a, there's an impact. And I'm like, there are people in our church where I'm like, in my context, young adults, I, I don't have that many married people. Um, but just as reading first Corinthians, I'm like, man, this is, this is a letter for the church. So I think appreciating the, the parts that specific to me, like just teaching young adults on mm-hmm. discernment and wisdom and going through dating relationships, but seeing the color of, of a book and as you move into second Corinthians, like opens with suffering and interacting with people who are stuck in sin. So I'm like, okay, definitely. It's, it's a letter for church people. So I I was going to say the same thing. I just think it gives such a good picture of how the church is not perfect and how we have so many issues to work through. Um, Unity is a huge one, obviously through this within the, with spiritual gifts and the disunity with the Lord's supper 
Intensity over leaders, like yeah. people picking different leaders. Right, that's totally. at the beginning, that's yeah. right. So there's just so much we can don't learn look from at my that book. Shelf. I've definitely done that. <laughs> Right. You don't have any favorites. No, no, no. no. <laughs> there's I've a, never heard you quote anybody over stop it. No, in the In the pastor's library, there's like three authors that, like I have four shelves. Of the four shelves, I think two shelves are three authors. So I'm like, oh no, oh. I'm that guy. It's pretty Paul was writing there, to Freddy. me. Dang it. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, so, it's such a good reminder too that like these people had believed the gospel, but they yeah. just didn't know how to act it or how to live it out. Like what does yeah. it look like to actually live out this belief in our in our intimate relationships, in our singleness, in our, um, whether we sue somebody or not. Like, it's just so down to earth practical. Right. And that's yep. where Paul yeah. ends it. Cause he ends with reminding them what the gospel is. And that's yeah. why we're here. Yeah. That's why we're together. That's why. Like we're with the church. With Corinthians 15 yeah, and stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then the future hope mm-hmm. that kind of sh- makes everything kind of come in its shadow. Was there anything in uh, second Thessalonians at all that you kind of remember? Or was that too far along, too far in your memory? No, I, I look through my notes because I like to write things as I read. And I, yeah. I just really appreciated in that book how he just just encourages them so much despite the difficulties they're going through. Um, they're really going through hardships, but he's speaking so highly of them and how they are a light to others. They're such an example how they are steadfast even in difficult times. And like keep holding on because God's going to judge those who've been hard on you. Mm -hmm. So that's, don't worry about that. God's got that, but Mm -hmm. keep going. And then there's that section too about like their idleness and keep, Mm. keep working. Don't Mm -hmm. grow, don't grow weary in doing good. And why are they idle? Well, because they thought Jesus was just going to come right then. Right. So let's just wait for him. But Paul's like, no, you keep working until he comes. Yep. Right. Because we don't know when. And he kind of points out a little bit of what to look for, but keep going. Yeah, so that's a it's just good a words good little... since it was two thousand years ago. Yeah. He said that yeah. oh, we're still <laughs> waiting <laughs> around. Yeah. Like we might still be in the early church. Right? Yeah, I'm like Jesus might tarry another ten thousand years. I'm like, oh wow, that would make me mathematically still <laughs> early church. So yeah. Like, oh no, <laughs> it could all, be a long. All while. my thoughts were wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so looking ahead, uh, we're going to keep going in Second Chronicles, and then we're going to do a bunch of Isaiah. So anything that we need to know about why there's kind of we go through 10 chapters of Second Chronicles, then Isaiah, six chapters, then another five chapters of Second Chronicles, and the rest of Isaiah. Um, how do we understand this? Well, Isaiah um, is a prophet to Judah, the, the, the kingdom of Judah, and he starts his ministry when King Uzziah dies. Right. So we see that connection. And so you see the chapters, the way the people who have or- orchestrated the Bible reading itself yeah. kind of have play the back and forth. When Isaiah starts, when Uzziah dies, mm-hmm. almost get that mixed up. Isaiah, 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 yeah. Right. <laughs> and then we read up to the part where Hezekiah is the king. And probably, is he one of the last good kings of Judah? I mm-hmm. can't quite remember, yeah. but I always love that story. Yeah. And kind of Isaiah cuts right there into a narrative and talks about Hezekiah and you see a little bit of parallel there too between yeah. the second is it second kings or first kings one of them where you see Hezekiah yeah because with Sennacherib yeah yeah, yeah. second kings second, second yeah. kings yeah because yeah. yeah. just so before you see the some deb- Babylonian parallel exile. there yeah. yeah before they get wrecked very so sad you, yeah. so I understand why they're kind of going back and forth because yeah. they're they're definitely related and he's ministering during those time the reigns of those kings yeah, yeah if you read the first ch- the first verse of Isaiah, it talks about him ministering over four different kings. Mm-hmm. Um, and so he has a long ministry. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you think of it's like, I don't know, a vice president over four different presidents mm-hmm. or, a, you know, like somebody that's a Crazy. civil servant or whatever. Yeah, but this yeah, is yeah. like, yeah, a pastor yeah. preaching, ministering to warning, yeah. judge, uh, exhorting yeah. four yeah. different people kind of in this administrative, in this administrative role. And so, yeah. And then at, at the end of Isaiah or at the end of Second Chronicles, 26 it talks about the fact that the rest of the things of Uzziah's life are written by the words of Isaiah the prophet so it's interesting how the books kind of correspond mm-hmm. to each other right mm-hmm. they, they give nods to each other does that say the same thing about Hezekiah I think so maybe I, think I read that also in second chronicles okay well yeah they have like there's a couple like um Nathan writes stuff too and mm-hmm. Gad like 
yep. there's other guys like which we don't have i know right but i'm like but they wrote that would have been cool right that would have yeah. been cool to well, have I mean, nathan's narrative it I would be, I kind of <laughs> think would be amazing if someday those are found like yeah. even in like kings and chronicles and the rest is written by ito the seer yeah, or whatever, yeah, yeah. all these other people that they name hmm, what did they yeah. like where are those books they're somewhere in some uh, cave yeah. somewhere nah. well that i would mean, be amazing it, it would it'd be a pretty cool experience um yeah but like it's one of those moments where you're like well i guess if we don't have it now god's will was that we wouldn't have it yeah. like yeah um so I we, we have what we need, yeah. Right? yeah. But um, but doggone it, I wonder. Right? Yeah. Like, and when I see that guy, hopefully yeah. he's in heaven. Yeah. And I'm, I'm asking, what'd you write? Yeah. Do you remember? <laughs> hopefully exactly. You remember. Like the things like the Dead Sea Scrolls. What it did is it just kind of verified that the Bible that we had was the true word. Yeah. yeah. But then Remarkably they added. Ex- accurate. But then they added there was extra literature that they kind of added to the collection yeah. that wasn't biblical but still interesting, right? Yeah. Historical yeah. stuff. So I think that's what that would be if we ever found it. Um, so Second Chronicles, we don't actually finish till November because what happens then is we just intersperse back and forth between the historical books and the prophetic books. Mm. Um, Isaiah can be a bit of a confusing book. So yeah. my kind of advice for you as you're reading through it is to look at some sort of a commentary or either if you have an ESV study Bible or something that kind of divides up the chunks of it because there definitely are themes mm-hmm. that kind of different parts of it have different themes. So just to remember... Um, as you're reading through Isaiah, you know, 34, and you're in the middle of something, what, what, what's the kind of the main theme of the section? What section right. am I in in the book? Because or else it can kind of just feel like a lot of just random words yeah. <laughs> that he's yeah. saying about different nations and different mm-hmm. people groups. And so it's helpful. My ESV study Bible has like seven different kind of themes um, that the book kind of is organized around. So I think having something like that in mind as you're reading through mm-hmm. Isaiah is helpful. Uh, Isaiah's also just got lots of pictures of... Jesus, right? Because the whole suffering servant imagery, the root of the branch of Jesse. So I think looking for those things too. How does it prophesy about... So as we read that, those will all of a sudden be like, oh, I've heard that before. Oh, yes. yes. So it'll be great. Because a lot of the Advent readings come from Mm -hmm. Isaiah. Yeah, Um, like 7 and 9, 11. Yeah. And then the Isaiah 42 and like a lot of the suffering servant things that come Mm -hmm. come up through in his crucifixion and stuff um, are in there. And then we're going to get into 2 Corinthians... Uh, the end of that and Acts 19 to 20, Ephesians and Romans. Um, so Second Corinthians obviously is like that continuation of that letter um, to this to the church in Corinth. Second Corinthians is a very much like we said, I think last time, just Paul expressing his kind of heartbreak over this lost, broken relationship that he has with that church and kind yeah. of urging them like, come on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For a whole different bunch of reasons, you should listen to this gospel because I've been faithful to you and God's carried me through mm-hmm. things and don't turn your back. Yeah. So, yeah, you wonder whatever happened to that church in yeah. Corinth. Um, well, and like a powerful, I think like beautiful imagery, like he uses the parent image mm-hmm. um, a significant amount. And so like, like uh, there's a line, I think it's in chapter seven or like he's, he asks like, if I love you more, am I to be loved less? Like he's like, they, they kind of, they thought he was lame. Like he's, yeah. he wasn't a super apostle. He wasn't all that in a bag of chips. Yeah. Um, and then in the end, he's like, no, like I'm, I care about you guys. Like I, I am willing to spend and be spent for you in first Corinthians 12. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, it, it's a beautiful picture. I think of, of like ministry. So like yeah. when I look at someone like Mark Birch, like, yeah. you know, does he love his church? Of course he does. Yeah. Right. And you know, and he's losing his hair. Don't tell him <laughs> he hasn't noticed yet. Um, but I'm like, Freddy. you are, what? Don't tell him. I, oh, is this recorded? Oh yeah. no. <laughs> I knew what I did. Uh, that's my dog though. I love that guy. Um, mm-hmm. it, it's just, I, I think a picture of the, the realness of life, mm-hmm. right? But so like people do dumb things. That's why I wrote first Corinthians. Uh, and then when you step in and you like minister to someone, you en- encourage them, exhort them. Like sometimes it wrecks a relationship and it takes years to get it back. Um, and that's okay. Like that's Christian life, I think. Um, so a very real kind of raw picture of what Christian life is like this side of new heavens, new earth. Yeah. I remember when we studied it at women's and men's Bible study, I was just so struck with Paul's love for people. Yeah. Right. Even these people that were being like so nasty to him. Yes. He just like loved them and he just yeah. like was in tears for them. And I was like, Oh, I, I need to love the church like Paul loves the church. Like if I can do that. Oh man. Like that's yeah. just <laughs> He was an it's apostle. such a bar. Yeah, it's such a high bar. Super, yeah, yeah. 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 He wasn't like the super apostle they wanted, but no, he was but like he a was. super apostle. Yeah. Like in terms of his love for the church. Yeah. Um Acts nineteen transitions to him 
going to Ephesus. Mm-hmm. Um, Ephesus was a super interesting city in the sense that they, they were involved in, it seems like, lots of occult stuff. Like, mm-hmm. they're kind of like, come and burn their magic books and all that kind of <laughs> stuff. So when you just even think about who he's ministering to, um, <clears throat> that's a really interesting city. And then Ephesus, or then Acts 20, he kind of sets his face towards Jerusalem and starts traveling back, which is ultimately then ends to his downfall yep. of being imprisoned. Mm-hmm. So um, Acts 20 is a beautiful chapter of him exhorting the Ephesian elders to what they should do in his absence because he knows he's going away and he mm-hmm. kind of gives them this amazing picture of how they should take yep. care of the church and watch out for those who are going to kind of come in and destroy his work. And so he's aware of the future that they might face, right? Of mm-hmm. people that are false teachers that don't care about the church as he does. So, yeah. What would you like to say about Ephesians? Um, anything else you'd like to say about the book of Ephesians or the city of Ephesus? Well, the book itself was written much later because mm-hmm. he wrote it while he was in prison. Um, it's actually I just one of my favorite letters. Yeah. Um, I think it's a very encouraging one. And as I was preparing for this, I was reminded of some notes I took in class when I studied this. And um, the way my instructor broke it down into three sections. And I just think, oh, yeah, this was such a good picture like so he start the first section talks about the wealth of the believer Mm -hmm. how much we have in Christ Mm -hmm. as his children as his yeah as his heirs um, Mm -hmm. and then talks about the walk of the believer so yes we have this wealth but we also must walk in him and and how are we to walk in him so he gives many instructions in that walking Mm -hmm. um, worthy of him Mm -hmm. walking through differently than others, walking mm-hmm. in love, mm-hmm. walking in light, walking wisely. Mm-hmm. So all of these the different of walking ways of comes walking. Up so much. Yeah. 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 And then it ends with the warfare of the believer. So mm. don't just stay there. Now you have to fight. It's not, it's a spiritual battle. And that's where we have that famous passage about, you know, this putting on the armor of God, right? And praying through that. So just, just a very encouraging book. I'm looking forward to going through that again in my Bible reading this month. So, Yep. Yeah, Amen. I remember Ezra talking to me once about, um, <clears throat> because there are people who believe um, in a whole bunch of different kind of spiritual warfare tactics that um, might be like, we have to like kind of be able to kind of name and claim kind mm-hmm. of um, power over every demonic force. And we have to be able to like identify in our past any kind yep. of soul ties we may have yep. or all the kind of things. There's people that have like and they have a sincere heart in terms of wanting to get rid of the kind of the spiritual forces that might be against us but the book of Ephesians basically for people that were in that kind of world it Mm -hmm. says what you need to do is you need to know the gospel (laughs) and that's why he gives them those first couple chapters yeah and you need to walk out the gospel in faithfulness and you just need the sword of the spirit you don't need to have all this kind of magic ritual around kind of (laughs) spiritual warfare it's just very straightforward in the book of Ephesians right because if you don't have Christ and if you don't follow him then there will be more likely spiritual attack where you don't know how to deal with it right but not that we won't have it even as those who are walking faithfully but now you have the tools yeah and it's not a magic formula no and it's not yeah some people make it much more complicated i guess what Mm -hmm. ezra was saying to me like then we need to because this book that was written yeah to exactly those kind of people Mm -hmm. there's not complicated at all (laughs) it's just know who your god is yeah know how you should live and know what it looks like to fight yeah yeah well, to, to people who had actual magic books. Exactly, that's what I mean. Yeah. All the slogans, right? Yeah. So, like, they, you know, it is tempting to think, you know, if I say Jesus just the right way or <laughs> the right hand signal or the right anointing oil, I'm like, it's the same Jesus. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, the apostles simply said in the name of Jesus and things worked. Yeah. So a little bit more, I guess, attainable version mm. of Christian ministry. Yeah. Down to earth. Yep. Um, then we go into Romans, and I know Freddie can have lots to say on Romans. Oh, so man. I said, yeah. Freddie, you can just like <laughs> whack pass it on to you. They had it off at Romans nine, so that's <laughs> yeah. just when it starts getting real good. Yeah. Um, but no, I I think it we right we took like four years a couple years ago <laughs> to work through it when Jeff was still here. So mm-hmm. it's obviously a super rich book, and um, I think every time. I read it, I'm reminded again, like, you know, the kind of the old evangelism strategy, like the Romans road, right? I'm like, there's a reason we use it, like, because it's remarkably clear, Mm -hmm. like the Romans, like every major doctrine that the Christian church has Mm -hmm. can be found in that book. So Mm -hmm. like anything you, so like our Christian identity, Mm -hmm. um, like the origins of sin, um, 
what is the nature of sin? What does Christ do to save us? Mm-hmm. Like, what kind of power do we have? How does God view his people? You're like, if God is for you, who can be against you? Yeah, and how do you um, come to saving faith? 100%. And, yeah. I, I'm like, it is, is remarkable. So I, I think as you read it, obviously, there's a few chapters in there that people fight about. But I mean, that's true of most of the Bible, yeah, I think. Right. Like, there's there's mostly always... mostly Romans 9. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, like nine into ten, a little yeah. bit, and, but, yeah. and eleven. And eleven, I guess. Yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> Israel. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's kind of like that three chapter chunk, but mm-hmm. the rest of it, I think, as you read it, um, it's just reminded yet again. Like I think Christian life, like you said, is like in one sense super simple. Like you, mm-hmm. you believe things about God and then live a particular way because of the things you believe about God. And then as you read Romans, you're like, oh, okay, like no, actually, there's a lot of color to the things I believe about God. Like I, there's only one. I guess there's one human race. You're an, in Adam until you, by faith, join with Christ. And then mm-hmm. you're part of a second kind of humanity. And then if you're that humanity, then you live a totally different life, right? Like the sacrificial life described kind of in Romans 12 and, and onward. So um, obviously we won't get to that this month, but as you work through it, I think it's, I mean, it's a big book. Obviously it, it helps to have someone to go and ask questions to. Um, which is, again, why part of something like Bible studies or community groups is yep. great. Because yep. even if you're not discussing that in your actual group, you read something like that. You're like, yo, I didn't I don't know what that meant. Or, mm-hmm. hey, I like I hear people fight about this, but it seems pretty simple to me. Like, or or maybe, the WhatsApp gr- group also. The, yeah, yeah, the WhatsApp group. There's yeah. been a few. Yeah, actually, yeah. There, there's been a few people that posted some great questions this last um Someone had a great question out of First Corinthians 11, like the, mm-hmm. the head coverings yep. one. Yeah. yeah. And there was one more. There was two questions that, I specifically answered, but there was oh, the, like there was like the first three Corinthians or four. fourteen about women yes, preaching okay, that was the other and one. prophesying. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's like just and I'm like I love it. I'm like yeah. it's been so fun to see people like be brave and I'm like it. I I don't understand things all the time. That's why yeah. I have so many books. And then I look up what other people think and then test it. Yeah. Um. So I'm like that's what a church should do. Mm-hmm. So it's been super encouraging to see. Um. People jump in and don't. There's like a couple hundred of us in there. So don't be shy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Romans um, 1 to 8, I remember when we preached it here at Northview, everybody was just like loving it. And then yeah. <laughs> Jeff was like, yeah, just wait. Not all Israel's yeah. Israel. Like, wait a minute, what? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Romans 8, like 5 to 8 is like so chock full of yeah. encouragement. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's just, it's interesting to see too, like we wonder why books were written the way they were. And like a lot of the letters, like Ephesians, he knew that church. Yeah. And um, Colossians is the only other one that he hadn't met but Romans is it's like a, it's like a systematic theology book for Paul it's like he hasn't met this church he's hoping to join them he wants them, them to know what his gospel is all about mm-hmm. and so it's like his version of a systematic his theology preamble right? before he gets there yeah right? so it basically covers everything like yeah. you mm-hmm. said like there's not much that isn't in Romans um, so I, if, I kind if, of picture it like he he wants to go there yeah he's so desiring so he's sending them all this okay and then he gets there well in know. jail yeah. but still in, in the prison, point would yeah. be he's hoping to get there okay guys yeah. I, I sent it to you. What are your questions? Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. well, and you get that line at the end of Acts, like mm-hmm. of Acts twenty eight, mm-hmm. when like he's like, and then they like day by day, like yeah. people would come with their questions. Yeah. So I'm like, I, I, you have to wonder, like how how like part of what he wrote. You're like this guy. Ha- it's not like he didn't have answers to. Like he'd been working on this for years. Yeah. yeah. Right. So they have they have everything. So pretty cool mm-hmm. to have a I guess a, a seminary class like in one. <laughs> Basically, that's yeah. what yeah. it is. Yeah. yeah. Who needs Grudem's systematic theology? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, relax. Yeah. Okay. All right. We love Wayne Grudem. Let me publicly apologize for that. No, yeah. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We love Jesus. Yeah. And then a lot of his faithful followers, we use their stuff. Yeah. Because they break it down and bring in other parts. Come on. Yes. Yeah. Come Romans on. doesn't have everything, but right. it has basically the key Christian things for yeah. sure. It doesn't sure. have all the, obviously, the Old Testament stuff and stuff that we get in other parts of scripture, but it, it does a great job of tying it together, a whole lot of themes. So, um, Dolly, would you be open to praying for us as we continue on? Sure. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you that we could spend our summers in the Word and that it has continued. Lord, I pray that those who maybe felt that summer w- was a distraction, that they feel they can just jump right back on mm-hmm. board. So, Lord, just pray that even as they continue, even as we continue, we still learn and glean so much from your word and that your spirit would work through our lives um, 
and that we would just learn and grow and deeper in you through this time. Thank you for this opportunity, Lord, that we've had to just unpack it a bit. And Lord, I just pray that it's been a blessing for those who hear. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.